tickets. They're only watching and observing. Arnie Mason, Chemo 13 News, Anchorage. In Anchorage, they've just uh, completed a year and a half, $14 million renovation to the city hall. Now, the city will now enter a lease buyback program for the building. Last evening, it was suggested that Juno give the state the government center to keep the capital here once and for all. Well, former Assemblywoman Kay Diebels says that's not a new idea. I don't think it's totally out of the question. That isn't the proposal so far. But it's certainly not without precedent. Um, Juneau, in 1967, I think it was, uh, taxed ourselves for 1% to build the state museum. And when it was built, gave it to the state. And the reason we did that was because the state needed a museum. It was being housed in, that, in a territorial building, which is now the Capitol building. And uh, it needed a lot of space, and the Capitol um, activities needed more space. And we wanted it to be in Juneau. So we taxed, we built, the tax went off, and we gave it back to the state. So this has been done before? It has been done before. In fact, we're not the only ones who've done it. As we were looking into this sort of thing, we discovered that there are 21 U.S. state capitals that have given either money or land for their state capital building. 21? 21 other municipalities, yes. And we, we thought that was a very interesting fact. That's almost half the capitals in the United States. That is right. So, as you see, it's not without precedent in the United States either. There's another question that people are uh, wrestling with, and that is the sales tax thing. Uh, there's a lot of mumblings in town of people unhappy with the idea of increasing sales tax. The big fear is once we put a tax on, they never take it off. That's it? not so. Actually, a number of taxes have gone off, and some of them, when they have gone, when they have been ready to be over, the uh, assembly has proposed that maybe we'd like to do this other thing. Maybe we'd like to continue the tax and do this other thing. And when that has happened, the two most recent times that has happened, 70 percent, almost 70 percent of the people in town who were voting said, "Yes, let's do that." So when people say that the tax never comes off, they really mean it's being reset for something else, and they have had a share in that vote, and the community as a whole has said, but that's what we want to do. So there's never been a case where once the sales tax met its original purpose, it has not just been continued by the whim or the desire of the assembly. It can't. It can't. That's something that people have got to vote on. The assembly cannot do that. So if we get the 2% tax increase, mm -hmm. sales tax increase, there is a time limit on that, there and is. it expires at that time period. It does, and we expect that by that time we will have the proper amount of money. However, it does have a time. We voted 1% to build Eagle Crest to a certain amount, and that came off. We voted 1% to build a pool. Although that didn't make it on the first round, but on, I think it was the second or third round, but we, it did make it, and then that one came off. We um, built a museum, as I had mentioned earlier, in 1967 with the 1% tax. So those are no longer around. Um, there are some other taxes that are not around. Uh, there was a tax that we had voted on until 87, and it went away itself. However, at the point at which it went away, the assembly asked the community if they would like to have 3%, the same amount, for this other project or group of projects. And the community, by about 70%, said yes. And the same thing happened in October of 90. There was another 3% that went, and probably the same 3% actually. And we voted again. Almost 70% said yes. So the critics who are saying that once the sales tax is on, it doesn't come off, are dropping the fact or missing the fact that it has taken a vote of the public to continue it for other projects. That's true. And I think sometimes people just have this general sense. It seems like we're, they, they never go away. But they do go away, that specific one, and the community has to vote on another one or it actually does cease at that time. And the community has said, go ahead. Now, um, 
those of us who have run in elections and that sort of thing keep pretty close track of that of things that happen at election time and taxes that come off and on and I think generally people don't have a particular reason to remember that and so they just come away with this sense that there's something always there hopefully a lot of questions are I think that's a stairway to heaven behind yeah, us there at least up nice. to the radio station whatever <laughs> there uh, we women have always given a lot of thought to matters of the heart but not always to the health of our hearts last year 250,000 American women died of heart attacks some were smokers H two seven three A, and then on the second line, seventy nine. Uh, that should be the seventy nine should be down on the, on the lower line. Well, speaking of taxes, the president is uh, proposing some. You may be interested in hearing some of this from the president. The tobacco state congressman says the White House has reduced its proposed one dollar pack tax on cigarettes to fund health care reform but kentucky democrat tom barlow says the new figure is still way too high barlow says hillary clinton who's been supervising the reform initiative proposed a 75 cents a pack tax a congressional aide says mrs clinton talked of a 70 70 to 80 cent tax a 75 cent tobacco tax would raise less than 11 billion dollars a year and the Clinton plan, plan is coming on almost twice that amount from so-called sin taxes to help fund health care reform. If you didn't know it, the, the existing tax on cigarettes is 24 cents a pack. Closer to home, speaking of sin taxes, voters in Bethel will decide next month whether to exact a hefty tax on alcohol coming into the city. The Bethel City Council last night voted to put a 5% alcohol proposed tax proposal on the October 5th ballot. The tax would not be a sales tax, but instead a use tax. If approved, Bethel would be the first community in the state to have an alcohol use tax. Liquor stores in Anchorage taking phone orders from Bethel customers would collect the tax up front, for example, and send the money to the city monthly. On the receiving end, airline workers would need to see proof of the tax was paid before handing the liquor over to those ordering it. And passengers carrying their own liquor would have to pay the tax in Bethel. Bethel is what's being called a damp uh, community, meaning alcohol cannot legally be sold there, but it can be brought in from out of town for personal use. On the subject of taxes, we are facing a 2% tax increase here on the ballot in October 5th. That is to fund the new uh, government center building. Next Tuesday there will be a forum on the subject of the Capitol and the legislative move attempts. Sponsored by the University of Alaska Southeast, it will be held in Centennial Hall from 7.30 to 9.30. It will be carried live on KTOO-FM and videotaped for later broadcasts on KTOO-TV. The panel will have representatives of different attitudes about the Capitals being in Juneau, for and against. While signatures are slow coming for those trying to get the issue on the ballot in 1994 to move the legislature out of Juneau, nothing is being done yet in the Southeast to require the issue of the ballot to move the legislature and uh, have the cost of that move on the ballot at the same time. Former Assemblywoman Kay Diebels believes the cost should be on the ballot with the move issue. Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Absolutely. What would it take to get that kind of petition up, do you know? Well, it's been done before. Um, I expect that is the kind of petition that would get started just like any other one. A um, hundred people sign their names and... Um, and give their proposed petition wording to the Attorney General's office, and then they pass on it and decide whether it's a go or, or a no. And then after that, um, you just start going out and getting names. So it is possible to get done before the ballot in 1994, do you think? Oh, I think it probably is. Um, now, if those who are gathering signatures now don't make the January 1 deadline, I or maybe it's January 12th. It's, it's early in January at any rate. If they don't make that deadline, then it's put off for another two years. We would surely have enough time then. I think we'd have to work very fast and very hard 
um, to do it probably between January and November. But I think it could be done. Mm -hmm. Now the problem is, and I'm just thinking right off the top of my head now, um, the problem with that might be that it has to be turned in by this January somewhat or other to make it under the 94 ballot. So if we started our work after that, ours wouldn't get on the ballot till the following year. Two years. That would be very, yes, that would be very difficult. Have you thought about what this community would be like without the Capitol and the legislature? Oh yes, and I thought about it a lot before that final vote. It was, it was very scary. And they had done some work and figured out how many jobs would leave and what percentage of the community that would be. And it was something over 60% of the community would not be here. Now that's just frightening when you think of the infrastructure we've got, uh, when you think of you know, schools and water systems and things that have to be paid to run. And can you imagine this town with 60% of the homes shuttered up? It's just really scary. It would decimate Juno. It really would decimate Juno. We'd have to change our image rather quickly. Oh, I think so. I think so. And, you know, Fairbanks has got uh, university and a lot of military, and uh, Anchorage has got all the oil support and, and the university and some other things. Juno's got government. And it'd be nice if the third largest city could keep the one thing that it depends upon. The Southeast Conference, which represents municipalities and businesses throughout our region today at its conference meeting, has reacted to the initiatives to move the legislature in Capitol out of Juneau and the Southeast. And this is some of what they said, whereas the legislative move initiative would be a piecemeal capital move with no estimate of the cost of such a move and would, by law, eliminate Southeast Alaska as an area where the legislature would meet in regular session. And whereas the initiative to move the capital to Wasilla likewise has no requirement to present the cost of such a move and would, by law, eliminate Southeast Alaska as an area where the legislature could meet in regular session and where... Together in yesterday's municipal election will work well together, but the new mayor and a new assembly member are predicting a new fiscal conservatism for the city and borough government. Sharon Kale reports on last night's election results. Last night's election results put Ernie Polly in the mayor's office, Errol Champion winning over incumbent Kay Demels for the Assembly District 2 seat, and incumbent Rich Poor retaining his Assembly District 1 seat. School board winners appear to be Jerry Madden, Ken McQuaid, and Patrick Murphy, although uncounted questioned and absentee ballots could put Joe Falancia on the board instead of Madden. Polly ran against Bell Blue and Peggy Garrison for the mayor, and he says he's surprised that he was supported by 63% of the voters. I thought my good friend uh, Peggy um, would have garnered a great deal more votes uh, than that. I found that a bit of a surprise. I thought it would have been much closer. The former assembly member says it's critical to have the right combination of personalities on the assembly to have a group that works well together. And I felt good about the assembly. I, mean, I thought, gee, I'd, I'd like to serve with these people. And uh, there's certainly nothing in the elections that have changed my mind about that. Newly elected Errol Champion, an assembly member, says he expects to see a more conservative assembly now, especially in light of voting a rejection of three bond questions. Simply because that's a realization that we don't have the revenues to spend on a lot of the nice projects to have, but projects we really don't need. Diebels, who lost her Assembly C2 champion, says she's deeply disappointed. I knew that it would be tight, and I felt it could go either way. So I guess a prize is really not quite the right um, word to use, but disappointed certainly is. After 11 years on the Planning Commission and three on the Assembly, Demel says her first step in civilian life is cleaning out rooms full of city-related files. City Clerk Patty Ann Polly says there was a 43 percent voter turnout in the Juneau election. That compares with 37 percent in 1984 and 44 percent in 1983. For the Alaska Network, I'm Sharon Kale. Tonight, we take a closer look at the issues, the propositions, and the candidates. This is Municipal Election 85. Your host for tonight's show is Glenda Carino. Good evening. One week from today, Juno voters will choose a new mayor. Say yes or no to six propositions. They'll fill two assembly seats and elect three new school board members. With me in the studio tonight are the three mayoral candidates and a panel of reporters. Later on in the program, we'll discuss the issues and we'll uh, discuss it during a mayoral debate. 
But first, let's take a look at the assembly candidates, the school board candidates, and the six propositions on the ballot. Proposition number one, library construction, $7.8 million. Proceeds from this bond sale will be used to construct a new 28,000 square foot building to replace the existing